evening to you and thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Spectrum, coming to you live on Radio 1 FM 90, broadcasting from the central building here in the heart of our city, Kampala. We are also live on our website, which is www.radio1fm90.com. On that website, you click on the icon with the word, listen live. Now, Radio 1 is also live on DSTV, audio channel 897, but we are also live on the different radio listening apps, including TuneIn, Afro Mobile, your TV channel, Radio Garden, and Stream Afrique. Download any of those from the Google Store of your smartphone. Look for Radio 1 FM 90. And as long as you have an internet connection, you'll be able to listen to us. There are two ways to contribute to this discussion. One of the ways is to call in. Time allowing, I'll open the phone lines for you to do so. But you can also uh, share with us via the WhatsApp line 0703-090-090. Our topic of discussion today, we'll be looking at the Kitezi landfill crisis. And we're asking, what are the lessons for urban authorities? Now, we all woke up to sad news on Saturday, indicating that uh, an avalanche of rubbish had killed eight people in and around the Kitezi landfill area. Now, this number has increased to 22 people. Now, the search for more is going on because there are so many people who continue to say that they cannot trace their relatives. Now, the incident has been described by many as a disaster in waiting, and it has rekindled debate about solid waste management and the state of urban planning in our country. Now, KCCA is under pressure to come up with modern solid waste management systems, with the political leaders insisting that the central government has been ignoring this matter. Now, Uganda has more cities, including those that have started this financial year. And the experts say this is one of the biggest challenges they are likely to face. They are saying it's time to evaluate their status and the challenges they are likely to face. So we'll be asking, what is your view about this state of affairs and what lessons do you think as a country or urban authorities should draw from uh, this uh, particular uh, disaster? My name is Kenneth Lukaganderson, your host. And as I already indicated, please do share with us your views using our ad supply, which is 0703-090-090. I have two guests this evening. Yonobo Doreen Nyanjura, Deputy Lord Mayor of Kampala. She's also the LOC5 uh, female councillor representing Makere University. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us on this edition of Spectrum. Thank you so much, uh, Anderson, and uh, good evening to all the viewers. Uh, good evening to all the listeners. Listeners, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. We're also going to be joined on the line by Dr. Wilson Sanya. He's the president of the Urban Authorities Association of Uganda. But at the same time, he is the mayor of Koboko Municipality. He's going to join us on, on the line. Well, um, Robo Nyanjura, I have shared some statistics already about um, what has been going on in Kitezi. Maybe let's begin with a, um, a status report from you as uh, the leaders, since you are privy to some information that keeps on trickling in. Uh, what do we have on the ground so far? Uh, well, first of all, uh, allow me to send my condolences to all those that have lost their loved ones in the unfortunate incident that uh, hit uh, our country. Uh, now, Anderson, definitely a lot is happening on the ground. Uh, Chitezi has become the second office, if not the first office, for most of our political leaders since this uh, catastrophe uh, stuck on uh, Saturday morning. Mm. Now, Chitezi, as per the statistics that we have of uh, 2021, receives around 2,500 tons of garbage on a daily basis. I have no doubt that uh, most likely that number has since gone high. And uh, this garbage is collected by KCCA together with the private concessionaires. We entered an agreement with the concessionaires after realizing that KCCA in itself could not uh, manage the garbage collection. But that was also aimed at um, reducing the financial burden of KCCA. Now, um, we only we are only able to collect 56% of all the garbage generated. 36% is a contribution from the concessionaires and uh, the remaining percentage is uh, from uh, KCCA. K 
KCCA uh, is tasked with a mandate of uh, collecting garbage, mainly from uh, slums and then some of the markets that we have around and uh, the healthy facilities. Um, of course, the remaining percentage of uh, the garbage remains within... Uh, <laughs> it's not collected. Mm. Yes, it's not collected. Mm. Only 50... Finds its way in the drainage system. Uh, exactly, and, and, and that is... Uh, Partly one of the reasons as to why we have uh, floods. It's one of uh, the factors as to why uh, we have slabs. So, of course, that is quite unfortunate that uh, we only have a very small number of uh, garbage tractors. The last I checked, we, are only, we only had 22 of them, uh, having uh, procured uh, 10 of them about uh, two years ago. Otherwise, we are only having uh, 10 of them. So the situation is that bad, and the situation um, has been that bad. So what has happened in Chitezi? Really, honestly speaking, it's not a surprise. It's not a shock, at least to us, the policymakers at City Hall, because uh, this is a catastrophe that we saw coming, and uh, we raised an alarm to central government, we raised an alarm to our technical team at KCCA, and uh, unfortunately, all our cries um, fell on deaf ears. Probably like you might have heard, Jitez was supposed to be decommissioned in 2015, and we are currently in 2024. I personally did a study in 2018 uh, with funding from SIDA, and I also, the studies that uh, I made where to the effect that we are seated on a time bomb. At the beginning of this year, to be specific, on the 9th of January, uh, we were at Jitezi with the Lord Mayor, and we said, we told central government, we told our technical team, if something is not done with immediate effect, we are going to lose lives, just like it happened in Ethiopia, when uh, the same catastrophe hit and uh, 46 lives were lost, just like it happened in uh, Mozambique uh, in 2018, where 16 people lost their lives. So when we say that uh, this has been an accident in waiting, we say it because we've been on the ground. We also say it because uh, we have case studies where the same has happened. All right. Um, now that uh, we have that kind of situation, you, you were saying that uh, the government... Uh, did not listen to your yet to your outcry. Uh, maybe you did so in the wrong formula. Uh, what exactly did you do? What exactly did you tell the government? Um, we look at the situation at KCCA. How you also operate? You have management there. Uh, is this an issue that uh, <clears throat> came during your meetings? Did you have a thorough discussion on this and the concerns raised? Well, it can be in the wrong platform because uh, the platform that we have as uh, policymakers, when we have the city executive committee, uh, where we sit with the technical team and we also have a council. And prior to that, by the way, we held uh, a number of meetings with uh, we have held a number of meetings even with our ministers of Kampala. And honestly speaking, this has not been a secret. Everyone, including the minister, including our technical team, knew, like I have told you, all knows that uh, KCCA was, um, Chitezi was set to be decommissioned in uh, 2015. And recommend recommendations have been made. And by the way, it's because everybody was aware, including central government, that we purchased 300 and, uh, uh, 326 acres in Dundu, you know, in 2016, because we already knew there was a crisis. We already knew um, that uh, Chitezi landfill was used beyond its capacity. So that is why there was that alternative of uh, Dundu in uh, Mukono. Mm. Unfortunately, like I have always told people, some things that matter to the ordinary people do not necessarily matter to the central government. Uh, the issue of Dundu, which was supposed to be a modern facility with uh, recycling um, uh, with a recycling, which was supposed also have a recycling plant, unfortunately, reminded has reminded an unfunded priority for a very long time. And when this catastrophe uh, hit, 
we remember it. You know, we have, don't, why don't we now, as a temporary measure, start taking our garbage to uh, Dundu in uh, Mukono. Mm. And of course, you saw, uh, I know you are following uh, the residents there with their area MP were up in arms. They said, no, uh, let the garbage in Kampala stay in Kampala. We are also not ready to face the same catastrophe just as it has uh, happened in Chitezi. So uh, today our crisis meeting happened uh, where the Lord Mayor represented us together with the Prime Minister. Uh, we had uh, the State Minister and several other leaders. And uh, there are several alternatives on table. Dund was one of them. Of course, that one has already been ruled out. Uh, there was also a venue which was uh, uh, talked about in Nkumba, and then there was also another venue in uh, Chengeda. However, after that meeting, consensus was reached, and uh, uh, finally, uh, Memvu in uh, Nansana municipality uh, was selected as our temporary... <laughs> I don't know why, Anderson, I don't know why you're laughing, well, but that one was I, I come selected. From, I come from Nasana municipality. I, I don't know what our people are going to say since the people in Idundu have also rejected the rubbish. I don't know. No, there is a difference, mm. by the way. <clears throat> uh, now, the difference between uh, Memvu mm. and probably Dundu and uh, maybe any other areas, um, there was no leadership representation <coughs> and uh, maybe even when we're purchasing this land, people are not informed what exactly the land was going to be used for. Now, the good news is that uh, the new venue for Memvu, in the meeting that happened today, uh, they were represented by the speaker of that area, mm. and they're also represented by the cow. And maybe the other thing that is fundamental is that uh, when Nansana was purchasing this place, uh, it was clear from the word go that uh, this is a place that they had bought uh, to specifically be used for um, collecting uh, garbage. So it's that where they have uh, uh, 12, uh, 20 acres and then uh, the 12 acres around that same uh, geographical jurisdiction, 12 acres were also purchased by Chira municipality. So as of now, that is our temporary ground. 32 acres. Yeah, we have 32 acres. <coughs> and uh, our technical team mm. that uh, includes uh, engineers and uh, our officers of uh, public health have already been sent on the ground because right. it's not just a matter of us... Uh, Dumping garbage, you know, some work has to be done first. Right. But yes, that is what we have settled for All right. for now. <clears throat> Very quickly, as um, political leaders in KCC, one of your responsibilities is actually to come up with uh, policies. And people have been talking about lack of a comprehensive solid waste management policy in Kampala. And now you're talking about a temporary <clears throat> arrangement as you also think about the long term. And people are also talking about modern ways of actually handling um, solid waste. Mm. And they have been even pointing to other cities where you can go and uh, see what they are doing um, to the extent that you may not need a, lot, a big land to actually handle um, solid waste. So what is the status of Kampala? Do we have a comprehensive policy? What are our plans? Are we planning to do uh, something that is modern or we are still thinking about dumping, dumping and uh, uh, filling, like they say, landfill and covering the rubbish and then we postpone a problem? I think that is very unfortunate <clears throat> and I even feel embarrassed, I should say, as a leader in this 21st century and a leader who, of course, is quite informed about uh, modern technologies and about how other countries actually do not look at garbage as a burden, mm. but about how other countries look at garbage in terms of uh, wealth, you know, because garbage can be used to generate power, garbage can be used uh, uh, to generate briquettes, that is to a small extent, that is actually what we have uh, been doing. So I'm rather embarrassed to stand here and I'm also talking about, you know, garbage trucks, dumping and all that. Mm. Now, Anderson, <clears throat> I personally presented a report which I carried here on behalf of the policymakers at KCCA. Now, and all those things that you're talking about, you know, 
uh, having a recycling plant, turning waste into uh, wealth and all. That. We, we have all those recommendations. We have so many consultants that have made reports and the same have been brought to the attention of the head of state. Um, the last report uh, is where... Um, it was actually discovered that uh, Chites would generate around 60 megawatts. And unfortunately, when the head of state was uh, talked to, he said government would only be able to offer 50 cents, you know, per unit. And what happened? The consultants had to pull out because it did not make economic sense to them. You know, why would they just be offered uh, 50, cents? 50 cents? So we lost an opportunity in that. We lost an opportunity of having a clean environment. We lost an opportunity in uh, um, having uh, power for our people. We lost an opportunity of uh, creating employment for our people. But, you know, if the head of state had embraced the suggestion from those consultants, definitely wouldn't even have uh, lost lives that we have lost lives today. So when I am talking, I am talking as an informed leader. But unfortunately, our hands are tied. We run this city on behalf of uh, central government, and we have a ceiling from central government. There are things that we cannot do uh, if we are not funded. There are things that we cannot do if uh, Dund was bought and then it was left there lying idle. And the excuse from central government has been there is no funding uh, for us to have uh, a modern facility, right. which we recommend. All right. Have you been able to actually uh, put in terms of figures uh, how much will be needed to actually have that modern facility? What are we looking at? Uh, now, the figures from our technical team uh, if we are to go with Dundu, one hundred and ninety billion. That is the figure that we got from the technical team, and, uh, as a one-off or uh, phased. Uh, well, that was a general figure that we are given. All right, but you know, <laughs> at least from experience, usually that can be done in installments. Of course, depending on the negotiations. Now, the issue is not necessarily about the money. And I have already talked about that. We have had consultants, investors who have come here and they said, but you know, if you give us this deal, then we'd be able to generate and make money out of this. But like I have said, when they tried to talk to the head of state, what he was giving to these investors did not make economic sense to them. All right. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. My guest this evening, the Honorable Doreen Nyanjura, Deputy Lord Mayor of Kampala. And we are looking at the Kitezi landfill crisis. We are asking what lessons for urban authorities in Uganda. We know on Saturday morning uh, that a bad incident happened where uh, rubbish uh, covered up homes. And as we speak now, 22 people have so far been confirmed dead. Uh, we have heard that uh, uh, Kitezi receives about 2,500 tons of rubbish. Only 56% is collected by KCC, and there was a plan actually to uh, modernize uh, that particular facility with investors uh, interested. And uh, one of the issues they wanted to do was actually to produce electricity from uh, the rubbish, but uh, they were offered less and it could not make economic sense to them. In total, uh, KCC would need $190 billion to set up a modern facility. What are your thoughts on this? And uh, Doreen, uh, back on the issue of uh, uh, the comprehensive policy, do you have a policy? What does your policy say? Uh, now, uh, I should, from the word go, maybe I should have indicated it. Mm. Uh, we have a sold waste <coughs> management ordinance of uh, 206. Yes, our ordinance has some gaps, but it serves some purpose. Because if you look at our ordinance, it at least talks about some issues of uh, recycling. It talks about issues of uh, sorting garbage. So, yes, we have an ordinance in place, mm. as Casey said. It's quite comprehensive enough, uh, much as it has some uh, small gaps here and there. But we have it in place. All right. Now, you talk about funding as uh, one of the problems that uh, you're facing. But we are told you people have been spending $4.1 billion on I want you to exclude me from those people. Well, well when I say you because I may be misunderstood. <coughs> you are all under the same authority, <laughs> KCCA. Yes. And what has been happening to this money? Why, why didn't uh, you use this money to actually modernize Kitezi to, to avoid this kind of calamity? You see, I always tell people that uh, Kampala is not an island. Kampala is part of Uganda. 
that we do not have thieves at parliament, but uh, we also have some thieves that uh, sit at KCCA, some thieves that do work on behalf of uh, central government. And uh, we have for long, by the way, uh, even tasked the IGG to come and do um, an audit about the corruption levels that we have at KCCA. Because for a very long time, under the category of local government, KCCA has been ranking number one. Now, when you talk about 4.1 billion, this is an issue that we have been so vocal about. And in our last city executive meeting, which sat in February, we tasked management to come up with an audit report about how the 4.1 billion is spent. And allow me read uh, out probably to the listeners of Radio One the accountability that was provided to us uh, by the Directorate of uh, Public Health. You know, they said on a daily basis they hire an extra uh, excavator. Uh, at a cost of 2.5 million and uh, for 365 days that is uh, 940 million which we spend on uh, hiring an excavator. Then the other accountability that we are provided with is that uh, when it rains now like in this period which is uh, rainy season we hire two excavators and in a year, we usually hire REIT 180 times at a cost of 458 million. We also hire a bulldozer at a cost of 2.6 million daily. And in a year, it is required 120 days at a cost of 313 million. Of course, they talk about uh, steel wheel, landfill compactors, bulldozers, and of course they come, that is the breakdown that we are given. And they said that in a year, that is the accountability of the 4.1 billion. Of course, this does not make sense. You can clearly see that um, this is um, money that has been misused. This is money that has been going to the pockets of a few individuals at KCCA. The last time we visited this site, even the site engineer was not on the ground. He had left behind uh, a brother, you know, to manage the site. Uh, now the institution never uh, contracted uh, uh, his brother, but they contracted an engineer. But if you look at the compactors and the equipment that we are hiring at uh, these amounts, that they are hiring, I'm sorry, I might be part of the KCCA, but I'm not in charge of... Uh, and I'm, I'm about to ask you, why <laughs> is Kampala hiring? Why is Kampala hiring? Why should Kampala Capital City now, be hiring? This you question should be having your own equipment. These questions to, you're to, asking. To handle these, issues. these questions you're asking are the same questions we've been asking the technical team. And uh, the answers they have been providing have not been convincing. They say it's very expensive for KCCA to hire its own um, to, 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 to purchase uh, its own equipment. And actually, last time we had told them people. We need not waste more money on Chitezi. This 4.1 billion that we are being given would rather save it and we start doing some work on uh, Dondo. And that is why we called for a forensic audit of this money, the 4.1 billion that is provided annually. We are yet to uh, to receive a report from the technical team because it does not make sense. Who owns the equipment there that is, is being hired? Uh, well, have you tried a, to find out? There's a company called... Uh, uh, there's a company called uh, Nippon. Nippon. I, I think that is uh, that is the the, the the right pronunciation, but I can I can always verify mm. that that, did, that is that is the company that was did, given. Did you try um, to find out how Nippon um, won this contract? Um, the reason I'm asking I, 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 this, I, 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 the reason I, I, I'm asking this, you you are our gatekeepers as elected leaders to be able to look into these things even before they happen. Now this is you have uh, an audit committee. Th this this is part of what we expect in the audit report that we test management to come up to come up with because it does not make sense that we have people who are technical and then they hire equipment at a very exorbitant cost as if that is not enough. The, the equipments being used on the ground are also in a very sorry state. To say the least, they are almost rotten. But in Anderson, I just wanted to emphasize, there's even um, Chitezi, the way it is, mm. the way it has been, 
even these equipments have, have, have not been necessary because it has been, had gone beyond the use of uh, excavators and the use of compactors. It had gone beyond its lifespan. All right. Honestly speaking. Right. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. We need to go for a break now. When we return, we'll look into other issues. There are questions about who owns the land in Kitezi. There's questions around compensation continue to emerge. Uh, but also, is this a problem of uh, the general disagreements, uh, leadership disagreements that are continuing to manifest at KCCA, where the political wing says something, and um, most cases we are told the management side does not listen and also the central government does not implement. What could be the problem? How do we get out of this situation? What lessons do other urban areas actually learn? Share with us on the WhatsApp line 0703-090-090. Stay tuned Radio 1 FM 90. Spectrum continues after this break. What talking about? Um, now, uh, first and foremost, we do not work uh, in, uh, in isolation. Mm. Uh, we work hand in hand with the minister of uh, Kampala, and she was, she was starts to follow up the same. But we also have the uh, the CPAC uh, at the <coughs> city authority level, mm. and we also have the um, director in charge of audit at KCCA. So mm. those are the people that are expected to give uh, full accountability. But for now, we might excuse the director in charge of audit, but we expect a report uh, from the CPAC uh, committee that uh, we put in place. How about the investigations that have been initiated by the president through the office of the IJG? Um, Is KCC uh, interested in that? Is it a welcome move, something that would uh, But uh, Anderson, like, like I already indicated, mm. it has always been our cry, and we summoned ourselves, by the way, the IGG to KCCA, and uh, we told him about the loot uh, that is happening in the institution, not only limited to Chitezi, but there have been issues of um, extortions happening in markets. There have been issues of uh, cleaners not being paid. Uh, there have been issues of uh, exorbitant uh, costs on a uh, uh, kilometer of a uh, uh, road constructed in uh, Kampala. So it was our initiative. So we are so much interested in whatever form of uh, investigations. I'm only concerned that um, uh, the head of state seems to have uh, belatedly uh, jumped on this because this has always been our cry as the policymakers at KCCA. We even asked the IGG to provide a special unit to specifically mm. look at <clears throat> the loot and the corruption that... Uh, is at KCCA. And of course, uh, listening to the head of state uh, saying the IGG should uh, investigate, I don't know what the terms of reference are. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what exactly he wants the IGG to investigate because uh, lives have been lost. He actually and, uh, said that uh, he wants to, to find out who is culpable. Was it an accident or it was something that well, was Well, but, but this is what I'm talking about. You, you know, that, that since 2015, since we're back, we have been saying we have a directorate that is not doing its work. We have been saying we have a technical team that is not doing its work. So what exactly is there to investigate? You know, we already have reports. We have findings to the, uh, we, we have findings and we have made recommendations. So here's where to start from. And I don't see anything new that the IGG is going to unearth, maybe probably to um, further emphasize what we have already discovered. All right. And of course, uh, for me, I was rather concerned at the casual way. You know, the head of state was uh, talking and wondering, you know, how did these people uh, start settling there? And, and I was like, but what sort of reasoning is this? Because she tells me, uh, the land was bought in 1990, 1996. And uh, we already had people that were living in uh, that area. So probably the government also needs to come up with uh, an instrument on uh, how land is purchased, for example, 
uh, on the resettlement plans, if they are going to buy land, mm. uh, they need to have all these uh, issues handled beforehand. Right. You know, resettlement plan, if there are people living in that area, all right. can they be resettled and compensated before? Right. We have catastrophes like the one that has just uh, hit us. All right. Uh, reading from the, the statement which was issued by President Yoweri Museveni, and he says, and I quote, the first question that comes to mind is, who allowed people to live near such a potentially hazardous and dangerous heap? Even without peeling off and burying people, the effluent alone must be hazardous to health. Then he adds, when I talked to Dorothy Kisaka, that's the uh, KCC executive director, she told me the story of how they wanted to move to Dundu, but the Dundu people did not want uh, neighbor, did not want to neighbor with the rubbish, and instead they have been working on positively using the rubbish, which is actually good, to generate electricity. Make manure, recycle the plastics, etc. That, however, does not answer the question of why human settlement was allowed near the heap. And this goes back to you, KCCA. Yes. People have been settling there. You actually told us you were there before, even at the beginning of this year, you went to see what was happening in Kitezi, and you could see these buildings mushrooming. Nobody is allowed to construct without a permit, so they say. And the president is asking questions here. Who allowed the people to settle around this facility, which is under the control of KCCA? I don't know. Why did he want those people to settle? And um, for me, this goes back to my question. Mm. Because there are people who have lived there even before we bought the Chitezi land. So the only right question, the only right thing we should have done is to make sure we compensate those people so that they live and find other places. If anything, uh, Chitezi was not supposed to be a dump site. Chitez was supposed to be a landfill. You know, when you talk about landfill, it is supposed to be uh, modern, you know, where we have a recycling plant, where we make sure that everything is under control. Unfortunately, it had turned into a dumping site. So for me, the question he asks does not really make sense. So if I have my land there, mm. then you come, uh, uh, government comes and uh, also buys land. Am I supposed to abandon my land? Definitely not. So if we had a functional government, they should have actually given those people money and told them to relocate to, relocate to other areas. Unfortunately, that was not done. So it's not enough for him to start asking questions how those people started <coughs> residing there. Mm. No. But, but uh, some people would say uh, it seems a lack of coordination even on this issue between you, the political leaders at KCCA, and the executive side, and even the central government uh, on, on, on this particular issue. Is this um, an issue of uh, the continuous political fights at KCCA? Is this an issue of uh, uh, failure to adhere to policy? Is it really an issue of lacking funding, uh, like uh, the, the government has insisted? For me, I think it's a combination of, uh, it's a combination of issues, but uh, at least... None of us, the political leaders at KCC, is actually interested in uh, politi uh, politicking. Our major interest was in uh, making sure that the people who reside there are safe. Mm. Our major interest was in uh, uh, making sure that at least the money that is put in that place is accounted for. Our major interest as uh, policymakers at City Hall was in uh, ensuring that the catastrophe which just happened on Saturday, mm. be avoided. And that is why we have been coming up with a number of reports. That is why we've been coming up with a number of resolutions, unfortunately, which have never been respected. Unfortunately, which have never been implemented. By the way, if you go on the ground, I mm. don't know if you have followed, um, the people of Chitezi have somehow been hostile to some of the political leaders. But when the Lord Mayor went there, they were saying, Oh, Lord Mayor, Wabagamba, you told them, you warned them, and they didn't act. So at least even the people on the ground appreciate the efforts that we did. But Anderson, we couldn't go beyond that. We couldn't go beyond that. We did what we could do. We did what we were supposed to do as uh, policymakers. So as policymakers and political leaders in Kampala, what are you planning to do about this matter? Uh, so you warned about... Um, an accident in waiting, and it has now happened. Um, now, as uh, policymakers, first and foremost, I already told you that we've been trying to find an alternative 
uh, where garbage can be deposited mm. because uh, also having uncollected garbage in the city for a week was also going to be another catastrophe. And that question has been settled. Number uh, two, the question is: Are we still going to have a, a kitesi style? No one is going. No one is. Go, no one is going to allow that. Mm. Uh, probably, you know. Apart from me being the deputy lord mayor, I'm also an activist. If needs be, if uh, the new place you have discovered is going to turn into another landfill, I will remove my suit and join the people in saying we are not going to allow another chitezi in this new area of Mevu that we have just discovered. Now, as policymakers, we have also been pushing uh, for um, for compensation. Um, and the Prime Minister said that, uh, unfortunately, it was never an emergency on her side. She said we have to wait for cabinet to sit on Monday and uh, Monday next week. we are going to have an answer from uh, on Mondays. Of course, for me, these are very urgent uh, issues that didn't have to wait for cabinet to sit on Monday as if this is a normal but, way but of, but uh, there's also a debate of, there. Of, of doing things. Who should be compensated? There's that debate there. Now, for me, we are actually told some people were encroaching on, on uh, what was supposed to be the, the landfill. Itself. Now, that, that is why we need an assessment because even when it's compensation, it cannot or it might not be uniform in nature. There are people who lost their lives. So the compensation that is going to be given to that people, to those people, of course, we cannot bring the lives of those that have died. Mm. There are people who have lost their property. There are people who have lost their livestock. So the compensation is not, I don't think it's going to be uniform. It is supposed to be uh, done after an assessment has been conducted. And uh, maybe just to emphasize Anderson, for mm. me, one thing that I picked from this whole incident is um, how this incident exposed the dysfunction of uh, the government that we have. That uh, the first help that came in came from Red Cross, mm. the tents, and then it was the people who were trying to dig up the place with the uh, hose and all that. And yet, under normal circumstances, you know, Red Cross is supposed to come in and supplement mm. the efforts of. Uh, government. Mm. If you want to see how disorganized, how unprepared uh, central government is, you wait for a catastrophe to happen. Uh, how about KCC? Do see. you have a disaster response strategy? Um, Before you even talk about the central government? You see, like already, like already indicated, mm. uh, and someone was actually indicating today morning that he was shocked uh, when he had the head of state heaping the blame on uh, on, on, on entirely on KCCA, and yet uh, KCCA, by the way, is under the office of the president. It's under central, central government. government. Mm. So if there's anyone to blame squarely and to a very big extent, it has to be the president. Because right. this has not been a priority for the last so many years. All right, we have comments coming in, and I would like you to actually take note and respond to them. We have a comment coming in from Ben and Fred Twinamasco, who says, until we separate garbage at source in categories, plastic, paper, glass, and biodegradable, bio, uh, then we shall continue having the problems of Kitezi magnitude. What do you think about that comment? Uh, it seems to suggest that... Uh, um, there's lack of, you know, uh, separating garbage. You dump everything at Kitezi. You see, mm. our sold uh, ordinance talks about all those issues. Even the recommendations that we give in the reports that we have uh, presented, we talk about all and these issues. And he has even issues. sent us a picture to try and show us what is happening yes, in, other, in other cities. And, uh, different that's... containers for different uh, materials. Yes, mm. I agree. That is the way to go. And by the way, this is a very unfortunate wake-up call, and we hope that uh, the technical team, which is uh, responsible for implementing some of uh, uh, these uh, policies, take note mm. and uh, offer the necessary uh, and do that and do what they are supposed to do anyway. All right, Pat, listening in, also writes in and warns us about a potential danger. He says, Anderson, what about big and many oil tankers in Banda? When they explode, will it be time not to blame authorities again? That's a uh, comment uh, by part. That's what they call an early warning mechanism. Somebody uh, looking at what is likely to be a potential danger and calling it out. Mm -hmm. Then we have another comment coming in from another listener. Uh, let me see. Mohirwe Peter, 
who writes in and says, Lord Mayor and the Deputy Lord Mayor are all incompetent. When you visit other cities, you see drums where you can uh, drop small dust, e.g. cavera, after eating pancake, yellow bananas, etc. Why can't you put metallic um, drugs or plastic drums along every street so that the city can remain clean and which can help in reducing on casual laborers. Then it says, when drums for simple casasiro is everywhere, casual workers will be few, and their work is to lift the said drum to the vehicle collecting garbage. That's Peter Muhire there. I, I think comment. that uh, comment is uh, unfair, mm. because, uh, by the way, even in places where we have uh, dustbins, I don't know if you have visited some of them in the city, you'll find some of our citizens actually, instead of dumping in um, these dustbins, mm. they just throw their kasasiro on the ground, you know. So it's not entirely about um, the Lord Mayor and the Deputy Lord Mayor ensuring that the city is clean. I think even our residents, they also need to love their city, you know, and keep it clean. You know, if you have a banana peeling and you don't find where to dump it, why must you dump it on the street? Why can't you keep it and then when you go to your home, uh, keep it, and when they come to collect garbage, you know, you go and deposit it. So it's not just a matter of blaming, you know, whoever you want to blame. No, I think we also need to play our part as citizens. They happen to come from Fort Potro, mm. you know. Mm. The tourism uh, city. And, and, and I mean, no, no one tells even kids of five years, you know, not to dump on, on, on the streets. So we also need to be responsible as uh, residents of Kampala. This is our city. Julius writes in and says that stench at Kitezi goes over 1.5 kilometers far away during rainy times. He says, who are these thieves? Everyone talks about, but no one ever confronts. He's asking the thieves you're talking about that are stealing money uh, at KCCA. Then we have another comment from Edmund who says, Hello, Kenneth, I have carefully listened to Doreen Nyanjura's submission on the accountability report. Question, why does KCCA keep on spending millions and billions of shillings on hiring machinery instead of purchasing its own? I, it, it, I think it's more cost effective in terms of maintenance, fuel repairs, during breakdown, manpower, uh, to mention but a few. Let KCCA rethink and consider that aspe aspect of machinery purchase. That's Edmond there. Listen to us uh, in Lubaga. There are two questions. Who are the thieves? And this issue of reconsidering uh, hiring of equipment. Very quickly, if you can respond to those. Well, I think the question of thieves, I have uh, ably answered it. Uh, maybe for purposes of those who have just joined us, we have a directorate. Uh, which is in charge of uh, this garbage, and that is the Directorate of Public Health. So the thieves are in that uh, directorate, and we hope whoever is going to investigate uh, the people that the head of state has put in place to do an investigation should start from there. All right, we have another comment. Good evening, Kenneth, and your guest, especially Deputy Lord Mayor, Doreen Yanjula. Two comments. I have listened to her uh, you have continued blaming central government. The truth of the matter is both, as in KCC and the central government, have more time politicking at the expense of Ugandans. Then we have another uh, very particular comment from him too. Why would government wait for disaster to happen, then come out the last minute and giving compensation to the deceased with five million debt? They saw this coming. There's a whole ministry in charge of disaster preparedness preparedness under OPM with budgets and have done nothing. Thirdly, I have already seen a budget to handle this Kitezi problem for now, uh, close to 4.2 billion as a temporary mitigation measure. Why not use that money to acquire a permanent solution for this disaster? Then he says, where is NEMA in all this? That's Kamugo Alfred listening in from Kira Municipality. We have a number of comments coming in. I'll read them all and then we'll have an opportunity to respond to those as you think uh, should be responded to. In Uganda, usually things get done after loss of lives. The government also waits to join the mourning and supporting in funerals. Ugandans, we are on our own. Wait for crisis in water, wetlands, etc. That's Ken listening in from Naguru. We have another comment from Amo Martin listening in from Bali. My question to the guest, which company provides the equipment mentioned in the accountability and how was the contract awarded? Secondly, is that company paying 6% withholding to URA from the payment it receives from KCCA? That's another comment there. 
Uh, we have another comment coming in from Chris Kasaija. Uh, Kitezi Kalamiti, the director of public health in cases yes, should resign and then other officials found culpable should follow. Secondly, uh, although money does not uh, does not give life, the central government should compensate the bereaved families. The government has a disaster response ministry, uh, which is a disaster in itself. Uh, thanks, Doreen, for ably explaining those are the signs of a falling state process by process. That's a comment from uh, Chris Kasaija. Plenty of comments coming in, if you can respond to any of those. Yeah, there are indeed quite many, mm. and uh, uh, allow me to thank all of them for sending in their comments. I will start with... Uh, someone who said we are politicking. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I talk about how we gave uh, uh, warning calls um, way back, it's not politicking mm. because we went on the ground and we established that there was a, a catastrophe which was about to hit us. When we talk about how we visited Jitezi in January on the 9th this year, it's not politicking. These are things that happened. When we talk about how we have been demanding uh, central government to give us money so that uh, we construct uh, Dundu, which we bought in 2016, into a modern facility of uh, into into a, into a modern facility of uh, doing away with the waste that we collect. It's not politicking, you know. These are things. These are issues. These are proposals that we have. So there's no politicking here. I'm simply stating facts. I'm simply telling you. Uh, why we are hit by the catastrophe that we have been that we have uh, currently encountered, and of course he asked another question. He says, "Where is Nema?" Now, an environmental impact assessment was conducted, and uh, the same was uh, submitted to Nema. Unfortunately, five years later, we have not had any um, action uh, taken by Nema. All right, we have a comment coming in from George, who is listening in from Mulago. He said, thank you, Anderson, for hosting uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Hiring machinery, uh, there he's wondering, says, cases here are the best planners. I think there is a lot of politicking in the institution which needs to be sorted. The person in the Office of Public Health is competent, but the interest of the leaders is not to prioritize until such disasters happen. You wake up with trash in Kampala streets and you can't find a litter bin. Who is involved in these procurements? Why should Kampala have potholes? Yet the city then pays 100% of taxes. Well, those are the comments that continue coming in. We have another comment from uh, Bob, uh, from uh, Benjamin, Benjamin Rugamba, who said, Doreen speaks uh, like a uh, real Lord Mayor. Uh, sounds she has, uh, says, uh, sounds she is... She has the capacity. Well, I don't know if he's suggesting that you should consider um, going for the position of Lord Mayor. Then we have another comment here. The Kites incident, incident was not an accident but a disaster due to negligence. The cause is manifest. Unlike neighboring countries, our head of state insists on unrestricted use of plastic which do not, which never decompose it. Which never decompose. Uh, he says, cases here is a battleground where all sorts of substandard cadres, both technical and political, operate to punish Kampala voters for rejecting the NRM. There are hundreds on the payroll uh, burdening the taxpayer. Head of state is constitutionally mandated to run cases here in cases of emergency, but he took it over, which does not help matters. The entire city administration framework uh, breathes, needs revamping, and uh, cases here problems cannot be addressed in a nutshell. That's Bob, who is also listening to us here in Kampala. Well, Doreen, uh, we're running out of time. Very quickly, one comment from Jeff. The Deputy Lord Mayor tells us that the problem of garbage dumping has been sorted despite the tragedy at Kitezi, but that, that is contrary to what actually is on the ground because for one month, uh, we had an issue of dripping garbage trucks leaving a filthy, stinking stage right from the garbage heaps at Nakasero Market through Kampala Roads all the way to Mperere. That's a comment from Jeff there. If you can respond to some of those comments and then we wrap up the discussion. I, I think I'll first of all respond to Jeff, who is uh, misquoting me. I never said the problem of dumping uh, has been sorted in Kampala. I mm. actually complained that it's one of the challenges that we continue to encounter. I even rallied the citizens also uh, be responsible residents to also love uh, their city. But I also went ahead and gave statistics of how only 56% of the garbage generated in the city uh, is the only one uh, that we managed to collect, both KCC and also the, the concessionaires. Now, Anderson, 
this is a very unfortunate wake up call, you know, to government. And uh, for me, when such catastrophes hit, it shouldn't be just a matter of government giving out five kilos of posho and then five kilos of beans. And then we think that that is what our people deserve. I think now is the time for government to come up with a, a long-term plan mm -hmm. to, organ, uh, to prepare for right. such uh, catastrophes. Like I already said, have a resettlement plan beforehand and also compensation plans, you know. We shouldn't just go and, and also have a plan on how uh, land uh, for such use as a landfill is... Um, is purchased. It's right. not, should it, should it just be a matter of, uh, you know, Anderson giving me a call because he knows me and he says, I have this land, can you get me someone to buy it? No, I think that is not how uh, governments function. I think that is not how uh, governments are supposed to function. So this is a wake up call. All right. And uh, we hope that this is the last time such a catastrophe befalls the people of this country. All right, with that, we come to the end of Spectrum. I must thank you, uh, Honorable Dorin Nyanjura, for sparing time to speak to you. Ghanaians will continue following these developments and time allowing will also bring in other experts to provide uh, constructive criticism and advice on how um, issues of solid waste management can be handled in the near future. Up next, we have the news in English with Ms. Josephine Dagano. Thereafter, we'll have the salt wind from me and my guest. Good night.